It unfortunately has seemed to be a bleak year for most Kentucky farmers. But in this year in review, agriculture agent Brandon Sears gives us a rundown on why this is, but also adds that there is hope moving forward. As we kind of think back about 2019, a little bit of kind of where we where we've been and maybe where we're going. Um, I think back to the winter that we had, it was it was a really bad one. Certainly the worst that I guess I've seen in my time here as far as trying to get cattle through the winter. We had a lot of mud, we had a lot of cold conditions. The cold rain and mud is actually worse on cattle and livestock than if it were just nice frozen ground and dry conditions. Market for cattle right now this fall is still, I guess I'd say historically weak. We look to be on par with what our prices were last year. Some cases three to six cents less. The demand is um, not real strong at this time. These markets occur in cycles and so we're in a position now it looks like to where in the next few years the demand will come back uh, to a larger degree and especially if we can get some of these export issues worked out. Um, I think we will see better prices but it, it may take another year or two to get to get to that point. Some other crops that took a hit this year were corn, but especially soybeans. On the corn side, we actually ended up uh, coming out pretty good. I, some of the farmers I've talked to locally had averaged somewhere between 150 and 200 bushels per acre, which is, which is okay for us with our type soils. The soybeans are another issue um, because the soybeans typically mature in August and September when they actually put seed on the plant. Um, we had a lot of issues this year. If you remember, the, in September we didn't have any rainfall practically. And so that was a critical time when those plants needed rainfall to help produce seed and it just wasn't there. So um, I've heard some pretty bleak reports on soybean yields, um, 15 bushels, 20, 30 bushels, when we would hope to get 50, 60, 70 in some cases. So. Our soybean yields are really hurt there. Tobacco was once a huge cash crop here in Kentucky, but Sears says there has been a large decrease for multiple reasons. Madison County has historically been a, a major tobacco producer. Back in the mid, mid to late 90s, we were top three in the state. This year, the, the best that I can estimate, I think we had four or five growers this year. The markets have actually recently opened, and um, it, it doesn't appear that there's a, a big demand at this point for Kentucky Burley, and so that's 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 pretty disheartening uh, news, especially after you know, tobacco is always a challenging crop to grow, right? But um, it looks like there's some issues with quality as far as the color to the leaf, and I think that gets back to the dry conditions we had in August and in September especially when that crop was in the barn trying to cure. Lastly, Sears adds that the at times controversial hemp and CBD crops may end up being lucrative for Kentucky farmers, but there's still a lot to learn. You know, I don't know. That's the million dollar question, I guess. Um, that hemp does seem to be one, I would say, potential bright spot um, in, in agriculture right now. Um, I really feel like if it didn't happen this year, next year here in Madison County anyway, we'll see more acres of hemp grown than we will barley tobacco. There are some challenges there as well and, and one of the big issues is we're all learning on industrial hemp, right? It's been, um, you know, had been grown for dozens of years, tens, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. I'm cautiously optimistic about hemp for Kentucky. One of the wild cards still is FDA and how they might potentially regulate CBD oil. CBD seems to be driving the majority of the hemp production right now. But as I said earlier, I, I do think that there are some brighter days ahead because um, these markets do occur in cycles. And so um, I, I expect that, that these markets will come back. We won't always have challenging conditions as far as trying to grow agricultural commodities. Um, and if we can get the market situation settled out, the tariffs, the trade issues settled, I think that could really put us in a good position uh, down the road. For more stories such as these, be sure to visit Richmond's very own WBONTV.com. I'm Marissa Hempel.